Hello friends. In MBBS for our medical graduation, we study close to around 19 different subjects. Each subject being a specialty in itself. Each subject, I mean, you're allotted a book that is thick enough that contains huge bulk of information and each subject requires you to acquire a certain skill set for you to practice medicine or practice that specialty. And this happens in quite a limited amount of time. In general, two things that we learn over time, one is the clinical knowledge, the backbone of medicine, the framework. The second is this clinical skills that each one of us acquires over time and which improves with practice. And those things we're less likely to forget. Now coming to clinical knowledge, it also comes in two different flavors. One is the pure facts. So we are supposed to uh, remember big lists, say, names of drugs, the side effects of particular drugs, or big tables or big maybe diagrams, that's facts. And over this four and a half or five years of our medical graduation, I don't think we ever receive a session or a particular course that teaches us how to learn all these 19 different subjects or how to do that in a limited span of time. I mean, each subject in turn then is a specialty. As I said, someone will spend three more years learning a particular subject. Ophthalmology, someone may learn it over three years and become a specialist in ophthalmology. But in MBBS, in a limited amount of time, you're supposed to cover so many different subjects and you're not taught how to learn effectively, how to remember all the information that you're supposed to remember. In this video, I will try to cover some of the scientifically proven methods, techniques that have been developed over time that can help us remember more information so that we develop a sound foundation of clinical information or knowledge so that we improve our clinical skills subsequently. Well, first of all, let us all admit, we all forget the information that we've learned. It's normal. It's a common situation. We've read some topic very thoroughly, maybe a week back, and today we're almost blank. We don't recall the information that was in that given chapter. This is especially true if it's pure facts. I mean, you may have memorized a big list of drugs in a particular class. You may have memorized the whole list of investigations that we do in a given patient. But then after an interval, you may not remember. Maybe you remember 10% of that information. And in fact, it's shown by science that the rate at which we forget the learned information is exponential. Go read the research by Herman Ebbinghaus, a famous experimental psychologist. And he showed us that in a scientific way, he, he proved that humans forget information that they have learned exponentially. Maybe after a week, we may remember, say, 10 or 20 percent of the original information that we have retained initially. There may be exceptions, but vast majority of us forget things exponentially, and this is normal. So how do we circumvent this problem? One solution is spaced repetitions. This is a scientifically proven method. And what that means is 
you repeat a given information, you repeat a given concept, you repeat a given topic or a chapter, maybe after a few days, maybe after a week, maybe after a month and so on. And this over time increases the amount of information that you retain from that subject. And of course, you need to put more, more efforts in that. I always say repetition lies at the heart of mastery. So by doing spaced repetitions over time, your brain remembers more and more amount of information from a given topic. So this is spaced repetitions. So now that you've decided that you will revise a given topic multiple times, the next question is how to do so. Well, one method is that you take out that same book, you read the same book line by line, underlining and re-underlining and so forth, but that is not the most effective way of rereading. That's not the most effective way of revising things. In fact, a better way to do so will be to test yourself in the same topic. Exams, I know the way we feel about exams in our MBBS. The moment we have our exams, pre-profs or profs, that's related to fear. But I'm not talking of the final exams. I'm talking of the tests that you can, you know, you can practice in so many different ways. We all have MCQ books easily available. Every subject, four or five different types of MCQ books. Get one of those books. Practice whatever information that you've learned. So this way, you actually revise that topic in a, in a much better way. Instead of rereading, re-underlining, you're actively recalling the information that you've learned and you're reinforcing on the information that you previously remembered enough about. So frequently test yourself the modality you have to choose for yourself. You can choose from an MCQ book. You can use some online platform to practice, but practice, practice and practice. Another scientifically proven method of improving learning by medical students is flipped classrooms. So what do they mean? Uh, we know the traditional way of teaching, right? Uh, you go to a class every day, a teacher, your professor comes, shows you some PowerPoint slides, he explains the concepts. Then uh, those who are better ones, like uh, some of the good students, they go back home, they read it from the book, that's all. The flipped classroom means that you read the topic before you enter the class, before the teacher explains the concept to you. You read the topic at home, you come to class to practice that topic or maybe discuss with your friends. Let's also admit that no one can master all the concepts, all the things. You may not be perfect in a particular subject. You may not be perfect in a particular topic, but your friend may be. So learn, learn the topic from him or you teach him the topic that you know very well. So this way, a group of students, you may cooperate with each other. You may, you may discuss and clear very complex topics in an easy fashion. Maybe you take help from a senior, maybe you take help from a faculty, but this group learning is important for difficult topics or in general, it's, it's, it's great for learning. So these were some of the practical tips that could potentially improve your performance in your medical school. Uh, I will try to make more such videos that help you during your MBBS or that help you while you're preparing for the postgraduate or ex exams or maybe for super specialty exams. Thank you. Do subscribe to the channel if you like the content.